All right, it's seven o'clock. Let's let's get this baby started. All right. Boom. Okay. So yeah. Let's start uh, let's start unveiling some some overlays here. All right. Hello and welcome all. Uh, this is Accidental Origin. My name is Brendan. Uh, I'm a writer. I run this show every week. Uh, yeah. Uh, still working on my intro. I think that was better. Still working on it. Uh, so yeah. Um, I didn't stream last week. I was at a convention playing role-playing games and doing cool stuff. Uh, so that was unfortunate. It was the first week in like mm, probably two months. Two months and uh, yeah, it was weird. It was super weird and I, and I missed it a lot. Uh, but because of that, there's going to be exciting new things. Um, so yeah. Uh, so I just revealed my logo. Uh, see it up there. Check out this bad boy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Only a few of these in existence for, for the people who loan me gear, mostly. Um, but uh, super excited, super excited. Today's episode is gonna be on the elements of story. You can see that behind me. I'm still working on my lighting on the wall. So uh, I'm not gonna be using that today, but uh, it is something I'm gonna use a lot more in the future. Uh, it's, it's really hard to light a reflective surface. It just, it just is. Uh, so yeah. Um, so yeah, I talked about last week, uh, things coming up, uh, over the next, uh, few months, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a second weekly stream, uh, which is going to be either Wednesdays or Thursdays from uh, around 12 to 1.30, about an hour and a half. Uh, they're going to be a lot less structured. They're going to be fun things, experiments, seeds, uh, studies, like writing studies, uh, which I'm going to come back to. Uh, stuff like that. It's going to be a lot more loosey-goosey. Uh, and I want to do that A, so I can kind of build more of an audience, and B, because it'll be fun to stream something that's a little less structured. Because uh, I love this show. I really like the way it's going. Uh, but it is a little, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work, uh, to, to work on. So, uh, yeah. So that's, th keep that coming up. Uh, I will be tweeting out all that stuff, uh, this week. Uh, and the first one I think is going to be Wednesday, I think. Uh, but again, I will, I will tweet that out. Um, so yeah, exciting, exciting new things. Uh, to start off today's show, I wanted to talk about, uh, some realizations that I've had over the last couple weeks, uh, especially with the week off, uh, and, uh, thinking a lot about, uh, writing and, and my approach to writing and the way that. I want to do the show and, and some other things mixed into that. Uh, so to start off, um, I had a blast at the role playing game convention. Uh, I'm going to be doing a design competition starting next Saturday. Uh, I won't let it affect the stream, but it's like a 10 day thing and I'm going to be working super hard on it, uh, which is really exciting. Um, Cause I took like a, 
I did like a design seminar when I was at the con and like uh, just been thinking about it for uh, quite a few years. Um, so that's an exciting opportunity for me, but just, it's also, uh, it's cool to get out of your shell and challenge yourself in that way. Um, it's called, G um, of course, it's called Game Chef. It starts on June 4th. It's a worldwide competition. It's a worldwide competition. Uh, anyone can enter. It's kind of like a theme thing where they give you like some ingredients and a theme and you gotta, you gotta make something with that, which I love those kind of restrictions. Uh, I'm cool with working it within boundaries. Um, and uh, I've, talked, I've talked a lot about, to artists about stuff like that where they almost feel, a lot of artists feel, uh, they feel more free when they're hindered in those ways uh, because it allows you to sort of channel your creativity into specific things that are already set, which is an interesting concept. Um, and something that I definitely understand. I mean, that's why we use writing prompts, right? And, and art prompts and all those kinds of things. That's, it, it's a way of jogging our creative muscles. Um, so yeah, um, that, that's, that's exciting uh, stuff I'm doing. Uh, I also wanted to talk a lot about, or uh, at least a little bit about, uh, Things like uh, things like being a professional writer and uh, things like art, not visual art, but like the concept of art. Uh, I'm gonna delve a little bit more deep. I'm gonna delve a little more detailed into uh, sort of art and craft and art versus craft uh, at the start of the show or the start of the content of, for the show today. Um, but I wanted to also talk a little bit about sort of the the idea of how I'm approaching writing from a personal and a professional standpoint. Um, if if you've heard if you've been to the first stream and you've heard my bio and all that, I mean, I I have a full time job that's that's not writing and and that's awesome because it pays the bills and that. It's good. Don't be a starving artist. It's it sucks, uh, but I would like to write more, and I don't necessarily have time to do that as much as I would like. Uh, so you know that's that eats up my free time like mad, and and that's cool because I love it, and I wouldn't give that up for sure. Uh, but it's a it's a hard road, right? Uh, to to become, to to get to a point where you can you can afford to just write, and I think the sort of approach to this show and, and the way that I'm coming at it is from an unprofessional standpoint. I'm, I mean, I'm, I've been studying writing for a long time, but I don't get paid to do it. So in a lot of ways, I'm, a, I, I'm like the viewers, right? Like I'm like people learning, learning. And, and, and I love that aspect. I love, I love connecting with people on, on that level. Um, but I think for me, after the game design competition, I'm going to try and uh, put myself out a lot more, uh, push myself professionally, you know, to, to accomplish things. And it's very likely, considering how much I'm enjoying doing the show and all that stuff, that uh, if I could do this, if I could write professionally, uh, I would stream a lot more. And that would be hella fun. So, yeah. There's all that. Uh, the other thing uh, I was thinking about this week was I spent I I spend a lot of time hanging out with artists, visual artists, uh, people who do illustration, people who do uh, all kinds of like fantasy and, and uh, fantasy art, sci-fi art, concept art, game cards, board games, those kinds of people, right? And I'm finding more and more as, as time goes on how similar those disciplines really are and how writers almost need to take a lot more a lot more cues from artists just like artists should probably take a lot more cues from writers uh, the thing that well I mean I was working on a short story this week and I, and I was kind of struggling with it uh, I couldn't find my 
my I couldn't find the character like I couldn't find the purpose of the of the plot I couldn't find the theme I couldn't find the thing that would bring it all together and that's fine so I put it away for now but then it was like well I need something to work on like I'm I'm not gonna do nothing I want to I want to create discipline and, and and write every day and, and all those things so what can I do right now and I was watching some art streams and it was like you know what I need to approach writing the same way that artists approach drawing in which the the things that the stories that I work on are in effect the the sort of the the finished illustrations the the big guys the guys you spend lots of time on but when I'm not working on those illustrations what I need to be doing is I need to be doing studies working on anatomy working on value um, and then you're going to be like, well, Brendan, how can you work on an anatomy and value as a writer? Writing doesn't have those things. And that's true. But, and here's what I was thinking, is a lot, a lot of people talk about having journals and stuff like that. Um, so... In effect, what those allow them to do is allows them to write on a subject for their that day. And, and I think I need to approach writing a lot more like that, where I can sit down and just be like, here's a character, write a piece. It doesn't matter if it's good, it doesn't matter if it's bad, you don't have to come back to it. It just, write something. Because your muscles will, will develop over time by doing that. And... Yeah, so like I'm, I'm trying to actually take a lot more cues from, from the other disciplines, and 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 learn stuff, and learn how I can improve my own process through those things. I mean, I talked about this in my creativity stream, where you know being multidisciplinary is a really good thing because it it forces your mind to expand into areas you wouldn't necessarily expand. Um, so yeah. Writing, art, fun times, fun times. And with that, I'm gonna transition into the first topic of today, which is art versus craft. Art versus craft is, is a extremely, extremely long debate that has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years <laughs> uh, specifically since the Renaissance um, and the idea is um, yeah I'm gonna put forth I'm gonna put forth the general and I'm gonna make it really specific as it applies to writing or as, as I've been taught it, it applies to writing so art is a, a oh, and, and this is why this episode is going to be really crazy because it's it's going to be very conceptual. Uh, it's going to be a lot of a lot of terms, definitions, and, and concepts. I'm going to try and make them as concrete with examples as I can, but it is going to be a little a little as far as things go. Um, oh, but I totally missed the thing. Uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about these things today is because uh, over the week I realized that uh, I was jumping immediately from brainstorming to plotting without really covering any of the little pieces that make up those parts. I, 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 I had it. I hadn't considered that not everyone who's watching this is really going to be into writing as I am, who, who, who has lived with, with concepts like narrative and concepts uh, like genres in the same way that I have. So this episode is really going to be us establishing our terms. How are we going to talk about writing uh, over the course of the show? Um, and, and, and hopefully 
give us a working language so that we can move forward with with those other those other parts of of, of the story writing process. Um, in a lot of ways, I mean, I'm reminded of uh, Scott McCloud's understanding comics, where you know he he breaks it down to as many and as small little pieces as he can, and sort of builds this foundation. And I want to do the same thing. Uh, I want to I want to build a foundation for us to properly discuss uh, to writing topics. So, yeah, and I'm gonna take this off because there's no actual audio. Yeah, that's better. So yeah, what what is art? Um, from Wikipedia, art is a diverse range of human activities in creating visual, auditory, or performing artifacts, artworks, expressing the author's imaginative or technical skill, intending to be appreciated for their beauty or emotional power. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that definition is extremely extremely confusing in my opinion, but it is a definition and you need one to be a jumping off point. So for me, and I'm going to talk a lot about this in terms of my process and, and the way that I approach it, and there's no, there's no correct way to approach this stuff, it, and, and, and that's why we've been debating it for so long. Uh, but for me, art is about an emotional connection. It's about something that moves you, something that stimulates you uh, intellectually, uh, emotionally. Uh, yeah, and yeah, like so something that's beautiful, uh, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So. For me, that's art. And the interesting thing is, okay, so, so that's what art is. But how do you count, like, logos? How do you count advertising? How do you count uh, newspapers? How do you count zines? How do you count... Um, just thinking of examples off the top of my head. How do you count YouTube videos? How do you count all these other things that are part of disciplines that we consider art as a society? Um, so that's where craft comes in. Craft is a pastime or a profession that requires particular skills and knowledge of skilled work. Um, comes from the Middle Ages. It has a lot to do with uh, the idea of making uh, goods, uh, you know, pottery, blankets, uh, architects to, in a certain sense, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so that's the, the broader definition of craft. But again, I'm going to break it down a little bit more into how I approach this. I mean, for me, craft is the technical skills. It's the knowing how it's the knowing grammar it's the knowing structure it's the knowing uh it's 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 all those little technical bits that you learn in order to craft something to make something um and and the reason that art versus craft is such a huge debate is because Where's the dividing line? Right? Where, where's the line between... Like... If you, make, if you make something... And it emotionally connects with people... Then is it art? But it's not something that we generally consider art. Art. Is it craft? I don't know, but th this discussion is extremely difficult, and, and I hope that uh, I'm not going to be super confusing with the way that I'm approaching it, uh, but I think it's a, it's a discussion to 
that that every artist sort of has with themselves. Um, so the reason I bring this up is because I'm teaching the craft of writing. I'm teaching the skills, the technique, the technical aspects of being a writer. I'm not teaching art. I, 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 I can barely define art, never mind teach you how to be art, do art. So I'm going to teach you the craft. You have to bring the art. And you can take craft and make art. 100% you can do it. Um, and yeah, it's, I'm, I'm always reminded of the examples that my professors used to use when I was in university of, uh, things like popular fiction. Uh, you know, uh, popular fiction in, in in the Victorian era was things like Charles Dickens right someone who we consider a classic but that was popular fiction at the time and so it wasn't regarded as art until until much later same with Shakespeare Shakespeare was a playwright you know actors were lower class like in a lot of ways, like, yeah, he was popular at the time, but, but he was, he was popular, not because he was an artist, but because it was, he was interesting to people and, and popular fiction, you know, things like, like, uh, dime back, uh, dime paperbacks and, uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie and all that stuff. Uh, genre fiction is all popular fiction. And, this debate is important because, you know, a lot of stuff we consider art today was not art previously in, gen in the previous generations. And our definitions of this change all the time. And I realize that this makes this, this debate even more confusing because it's like, well, well, does that mean that logos are going to be the art of the future? The answer is maybe. But how you approach making art and, and doing your craft will change how your end product ends up. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there, there's no right way to do art. There's no right way to write. I can't, I can't teach you how to move people. I can lead you along the path that will give you the skills so that you can make those connections and move people. But I can't, I can't, I mean, I guess, I guess the metaphor here is I can show you the door, but I can't open it for you. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I hope that simulated some sort of connection. Um, but, but art is a hard thing. And it's a thing that I've kind of been struggling with. It's, it's one of those things where as, as, a prof as someone who's aiming to be a professional, uh, you, look, you look at your work and you go, what am I trying to say? Am I saying anything? Like, I, I, I want, I mean, personally, I, I want to be the type of writer like my heroes, like, like Scott McCloud and, and like Osama Tezuka, the type of writer who, who can move people, who can, who can, who can inspire people. Um, and I work towards that. I work towards that every day. Um, and I'm not there yet, <laughs> not, in a, not in a long shot. Uh, so, so, you know, I've worked a lot at the craft, I can do the craft, but the art is the hard part. 
and it, it will get there. It will. But that's the thing, right? And I hang out with a lot of artists, right? And those artists are extremely talented, extremely good at what they do. Um, but approaching concept art and approaching certain other things is just, it's a different skill set. It's, it's, it's a, another beast, right? So yeah, art versus craft. Long running, long running debate. Uh, in the episode resources for this week, I do have a video from uh, a TEDx presenter uh, talking about art, art versus craft and the long history of it. Uh, so you should check that out after. But yeah. So, the elements of story. We're going to start with terminology. Ugh, big. Big word there, terminology. We're going to define our terms. We're going to talk a little bit, or a lot of bit, about writing, about the things surrounding writing, the things that define writing. Um, and I'm not talking just about like a dictionary definition, but also things like form and medium and genre, um, right? Which, which are things I haven't, I haven't really broached, despite the fact that, you know, it's like, oh, I'm writing a story, but I don't, I haven't explained to you what, what makes up a story, or, yeah, so, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that today, or I'm gonna attempt to do that today, I have a lot of content here, and I honestly am not sure if I'm gonna get all through it, um, so yeah, uh, and I apologize to the chat. I get going and I just kind of go. And uh, it's also one of those things where I, I kind of, it's a little weird for me to, to interact with chat, not because I don't want to, but because it, it, it's like permanently saved in VODs and stuff forever, right? And, and I was just like, oh, are people gonna think I'm weird? It, it like, ugh. Like, are they gonna judge me? Like, what's going on? Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna try and do better. I'm gonna try and do better, uh, follow along. I am kind of following this debate. <laughs> and, and, and I know your opinion on the matter, Sam, about how, <laughs> about how any debate is just a failure of definitions or failure of taxonomy, which is to say definitions. Um, and I agree, but I also think in, in sort of a little bit higher concept of, of this thing. I get derailed easily. I get derailed about derailing. It's, yeah, anyway. I'm gonna try harder. I'm gonna try harder. Don't worry, chat. I'm gonna try harder. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna list off some things here. Storytellers. Authors. Screenwriters, dramaturgists, uh, playwrights, poets, journalists, technical writers. These are all terms used to describe someone who writes. There's, there's more, there's a lot more. Um, and a lot of them are defined by a, a specific form or medium that they, that they work in. But yeah, we have all these terms to describe a single, a single discipline. Um, 
And that fascinates me. It fascinates me that, that it can be broken up into so many little pieces, uh, smaller and smaller chunks. Um, and it's even more interesting to me, the concept of narrative. Now, Brendan, what is narrative? Well, basically, narrative is a story. It's a sequence of events. Um, the cool thing about narrative is narrative is not just right. Um, a lot of scholars ha have, have used the term specifically only for literature, uh, like the study of narratology and things like that. And I'm not going to talk about narratology like really at all because it is hella confusing. It's one of the most confusing things I've ever like broached. Um, and it's really weird for that. It just, ugh, it's confusing. Uh, so I'm not going to get into it too much, but there is some very cool things that they bring to the table. Uh, for sure. But yeah, so narrative is not confined to writing. You can have narrative in, in film, in visual art. Uh, in nonfiction, in journalism, in games, role-playing games, casual games, tag, cops and robbers, these all have narratives. They have a sequence of events. The sequence of events isn't always described when we're in the moment, but there is a sequence of events. Um, so I'm going to go back to, to narrat uh, not to narratology, ugh, narratology. I'm gonna go back to Cops and Robbers. Cops and Robbers is a narrative. Somebody's the cop, somebody's the robber. That means that the robbers stole something and the cops grew up, went to police academy, got their badge, solved crimes. There's a backstory. There's an understood backstory when you play the game right? They go out and they do their jobs. There's a sequence of events there. And we're not, we're not talking about Scientology. We're, we are, we may, we may talk about L. Ron Hubbard. No promises. I hope not, but no promises. We're not, we're not talking about that. <laughs> so, I mean, the earliest form of narrative, or the earliest form most people are introduced to as a narrative, is oral storytelling. And I don't know if you've ever seen someone who professionally is an oral storyteller, but they are fantastic people to watch. Fantastic people. Uh, they're super engaging and, and they know all these things about how to interact with an audience. Uh, and, and that's something I should, I should totally look more into so that I could be a better oral storyteller, you know, be a better presenter, uh, engage more with my audience because apparently I'm awful at it. Apparently I'm awful at it. Just saying it. Or they're just saying, I don't know, whatever people are saying. Um, so yeah, um, narrative. Uh, and I talk about, I use the word narrative a lot, um, especially because I put like, I went to a convention, I played tons of role playing games, I play a lot of video games, um, and, and how these mediums approach narrative are all different. Um, there's similarities in, in, in the undertones, but they're, they're very different in their execution. Um, so yeah, that's narrative. Um, so next, next, uh, next we're gonna talk about mediums. Mediums come from visual art. Uh, more specifically, uh, watercolor is a medium. Oil on canvas is a medium. Clay is a medium. These are the traditional forms of medium. 
but there are also mediums in writing. Um, in terms of literature and, and scholarly, scholarly discourse, if I can pronounce things, scholarly discourse, uh, mediums are called forms. Major forms, classical forms, they're generally called forms. Um, and, and I'm going to call them mediums throughout because I just think it's easier, it's a much easier term to understand. Uh, so, yeah, totally going to do that. But um, for us, there's four major, there's, there's two sets of, two, of binary categories that define the major jumping off points for, our, for writing mediums. Uh, the first one being fiction and nonfiction. So fiction being something made up, embellished, or uh, presented in an inter like in a in a more storytelling way. Uh, nonfiction being more informational, educational, uh, less less of a story, but still a narrative. Uh, and, and see, this is writing terms, man. Writing terms. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's fiction and nonfiction, and then there's prose and poetry. Uh, poetry being uh, verse, like not full sentences, not full ideas, uh, very. Uh, very condensed thoughts. Uh, it's all it's all kind of packed in as much as possible. Prose being, you know, your general novel, uh, and then yeah. So those are, those are your like two sets of two, the the major breaking off points. Um, but we, we can we can like we can narrow that down even further, right? We can we can keep going down. So the major forms for literature are the novel, the short story, and a uh, drama. So those are the, the three major forms of l literature. Uh, but the other major forms of writing, at least as, as I consider them, uh, are the comic book and the screenplay. Uh, in terms of, well, I mean, these are all prose sort of things, right? Though scripting, like comic book and screenplay, use a lot of things from both. Because, uh, you know, you'll describe action and all that in prose, but your, your, uh, there's a lot of shorthand and terminology and things that, that create a more poetry-like aspect to the screenplay. Um... And I, I totally agree. I mean, humans do take endless arrays of data and try and assign meaning, whether there is one or not. Uh, the, we're talking about the infinitesimal nature of pi, uh, and that's the whole point of the movie Pi, right? 1998 Pi. About something that describes humans, humanity, God, with a number. With cracking a sequence. Um, and in a lot of ways, my pursuit of writing is, is trying to crack that sequence, to, to, to find the thing that, that affects all of us, that affects me, that, that affects my readers. Um, yeah, that, that moves us, right? Something with meaning. Um, yeah. So then, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this first section is genre. Uh, and genre is super annoying because a the first usage of genre is is actually a synonym for forms, and it's, I hate it when people do that because it's super annoying. 
because uh, it just makes things so much more confusing. Uh, but genres are uh, determined by narrative technique, tone, content, and by critics and popular definitions of them. Um, so basically, they, they can be anything. There tends to be uh, rather permanent ones that have lasted for a long time, uh, but there are there are so many so many subgenres, uh, tons of them in fact. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go to my main screen here. Look at this bad boy. New overlay. I'm loving life right now. And I have this prepared. A couple things here. Writing genres. So these are the major ones. Comedy, drama, nonfiction, realistic fiction, romance, satire, tragedy, tragic comedy, and horror. These are kind of the ones that have been passed down for generations upon generations of storytellers. Uh, Starting with Aristotle, with just comedy and drama, or comedy and tragedy, uh, and then moving up through Shakespeare and all that, and and more uh, Elizabethan, where you get more of the tragic comedies, uh, and 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 different different uh, types of plays. Um, so these are the the old school ones, the classic examples. But we'll flip down here a little bit more. Common fiction genres. Look how long that list is. You got mythology, you got science fiction, you got westerns, magic realism, uh, which I consider kind of a subgenre and not a main genre, but it, I mean, subgenres are still genres, right? Um, yeah, fantasy, fairy tales, fables, crime novels, graphic novels. These are, these are genres. Um, genre fiction, at, I've referred to it several times throughout this show, but genre fiction to me, or at least the way that I understand it, specifically applies to uh, speculative fiction, which is fantasy, sci-fi, and horror, uh, detective novels, and uh, yeah, fantasy, science, sci-fi, horror, uh, detective novels and uh, on a slightly different but kind of the same note uh, superheroes superhero stories are what I consider uh, or what I've talked about with professors and all that as, as being the main forms of popular fiction uh, and genre fiction so so yeah genre um, and, and I have a, like, there's nonfiction genres, uh, you know, journalism, textbooks, essays, biographies, uh, memoirs, reference, self-help, all that stuff. I mean, look at this list of genres. This is everything. And the subgenres break it down even further, right? I mean, when we talk about subgenres, um... Let's click on fantasy here. Um, yeah, look at this. Look at this. Genres. You can break up crime genres into courtroom, detective, gangster, gentleman thief, hardball detective, noir, legal, murder mystery. There are, there are hundreds upon hundreds of genres of that that people write in and, and and there are communities surrounding each of these little genres um i know a whole like i mean the, there's there's even some that have almost taken on a life of their own uh i think of things like steampunk uh vampire fiction uh as being like Vampire fiction is being different from supernatural fiction. Um, you know, uh, 
Myths and fables are their own thing. Sword and sorcery is a, is a thing. Uh, I'm a big fan of low fantasy, though it's not very common. Uh, the most famous example being uh, Conan the Barbarian. Uh, you know, compared to the high fantasy subgenre of, of Lord of the Rings, for example. Um, the Conan of Thieves is my current favorite gentleman thief novel. Nice. Uh, my current, my favorite Gentleman Thief novel is The Stainless Steel Rat by Harry Harrison. So, just putting that out there. Right? And then YA is kind of an interesting thing because YA is its own subgenre within all of the other genres. Right? Like, there's, there's YA fantasy, there's YA science fiction that are different from from just regular fantasy and science fiction, but are different again from themselves within YA. YA is standing for young adult, for those who don't know. Uh, it tends to be teen fiction, uh, but a lot of, a lot of different people read them, and uh, quite a few of the more popular blockbusters over the last little while. Uh, and I know people are aware of this, but I'm just putting it out there. Uh, you know, like, like Twilight and The Hunger Games and, uh, what was that other one? Uh, The Knowing? Was that it? Was that it? No, The Host. Sorry. The Host. Uh, I think that was a Stephanie Meyer book, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, The Host, um, that one with Shailene Woodley, whose name I can't remember right now, uh... Divergent, that one. Uh, those are all YA novels that have been adapted into to, to film series. Um, I love Sin, Sin City. Frank Miller, uh, I, I really like Sin City. Frank Miller has done some really cool stuff in science fiction that no one talks about ever because he's known for Sin City and 300. <laughs> And it, it's, um, it's just one of those things, man. It's just one of those things. Uh, I do love Humphrey Bogart, man. Uh, Humphrey, Humphrey Bogart being uh, the kind of quintessential noir actor of the quintessential noir film, uh, The Maltese Falcon, among others. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Because then... This is then uh, the Maltese Falcon and all that is is like a hard boiled detective, but it's it's done in this really unique style. Um, and uh, what sci fi did Frank Miller do? Uh, Frank Miller did a really cool science fiction book uh, called what was it called? I'm just looking at Frank Miller right now because I can't remember what it was called. Um, Oh, uh, it was called Ronin. Uh, it was really cool. Pull it up here. Oh, oh right, this is Firefox. Ronin. <laughs> yeah, man, this is this is live. I just I just make it up as I go. I Google the shit out of it. Uh, so this is Ronin. Uh, Ronin was really really cool. Uh, it's considered cyberpunk. Uh, cyberpunk being a, uh, dis a style of dystopian science fiction. Uh, not the only style, a, a style, a subgenre of a subgenre. Think about that one. Subgenres of subgenres. All the time. Every day. Um, so yeah, I was a big fan of this. I was a big fan of this. Uh, what was the other one? I thought there was another one. Anyway, while I'm stacking here, I'll find it. I know it's here. Oh, uh, I think it was this one. Yeah, this one was really cool too. In it, Carl Seltz, an insurance investigator, disco discovers he's also a homicidal cyborg tax collector. collector. Who happens to be the last hope of an enslaved robot race? Bam. <laughs> that's that's something. 
Yep. Um, and then and then virtual reality is a subgenre of science fiction as well, where you find things like The Matrix. And the movie that The Matrix is based on, uh, what was that one called? Uh, God, I'm having the hardest time remembering things. Uh, it was called... Jeez. Uh, Body something? Body something? It, 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 uh, it's, it starred the guy from Evil Dead, who I feel bad for not remembering because I love him, and I am having a hard time with this. <laughs> Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell's in it. Um, it was called... I can't remember this. It's from the 80s. No, it wasn't that one. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I can't remember. Oh yeah, it's this one, Mind Warp. And, and that's what makes The Evil Dead so good, is that it doesn't take itself seriously. I mean, it's almost a satire of itself. Um, in fact, Evil Dead 2 was literally a satire of itself. Um, and, and that is something that's vastly un, un, underappreciated. It's really hard, it's really, really hard to act like a bad actor. Like, it's, it's really hard. Uh, because if you're a bad actor, you're just going to look like a normal actor. Or like a mediocre actor at best. Like, it's, it's, it's this weird, weird mind twist thing. Um, and I do agree that the Evil Dead show was a masterpiece. It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's all I'm going to say about it. It was, it was brilliant. Uh, I enjoyed every episode. Uh, it was wonderfully shot, really cool stuff. Uh, the effects were great. Uh, they didn't feel too hokey. Or they felt hokey in the right ways. Um, like, they were purposely ho hokey. And they and then and then they took it like another step further to be like beyond hokey, but like because they're that hokey, they were amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I I I love that show. I can't wait for the second season. There's supposed to be a second season. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait. Thanks, Johnny. I love this logo. It's really cool. It's really cool. All right. So that's all the content for part one. Uh, and it is my break time, and I am sweating like a pig, because uh, it is 31 degrees in Ottawa right now, and the humidity index is super high, and I'm like dying. There's lights, and oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. So yeah. Um, oh yeah. One last thought, because we're discussing it. Uh, the coolest part about the Evil Dead is. They edit, they edit badly on purpose, and it makes, it actually makes it better that they do that. Um. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's that great, there's that great story of, of Bruce Campbell starting choking on fake blood at one point, and he's like, no, no, they're like, do you want to stop? He's like, no, no, just, just keep shooting, it's perfect, it's perfect. And, and like he's like driving the car he's like fighting the zombie and he's like choking and it's like it looks amazing on screen uh, but yeah the editing is bad but it's purposely bad and I know it's purposely bad because it actually takes effort to be that bad um, 
Unlike when you watch something like, uh, if you watch uh, Bones, Bones has the coolest characters ever, and their their interactions are fantastic. Like that's what that show nails. Like it just it's so good at that. But it's it's very very poorly directed, edited, and produced. Like it's not good. It's not good. Um, it treats its viewers like they don't follow the seasons. Like it's really weird. But it's badly edited and it looks bad. Because it's badly edited, 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 edited. There we go. But the Evil Dead is actually is actually purposely bad, and looks better because it's purposely bad. Because they just make it, they just pull it into their own camp even more. Um, so yeah. Anyway, break time. Going to break. Check this stuff out.